We have Dr. Fermin Lagan from the Southern Nevada Health District. We have Trustee Irene Cepeda from the uh, Clark County School District Board of Trustees, and we have Superintendent Jara. So again, now just, I, I know I've told you all this before, but again, we're reiterating no video of the clinic. Um, we do have consent forms if you do find somebody who is willing to speak with you on camera or um, for, for your uh, uh, newspapers. So we're gonna get started if you, wanna, if you guys wanna come up. Trying to hold this, but it's just, <laughs> just falling. <laughs> that's okay, that's okay. That's, that's okay, got it. Okay, um, uh, good afternoon, and thank you for being here with us. Uh, today, we, we want to share with you what we are doing or planning to do in the near future. Uh, actually, uh, what we are planning to do is a uh, uh, one more example of, of the strong uh, partnership that we have with Clark County School District. We, we have been working with, the, with Clark County School District for, you know, uh, in multiple issues, and uh, especially during the pandemic, we have a very strong and close collaboration with the, the school system, and, and this is just an example of that. Uh, what we are planning to do uh, starting uh, this week is to, to, to offer a vaccination to the community at uh, a school sites. There, there will be uh, multiple uh, vaccination sites across the county uh, at the school locations. Those vaccination sites will be offering a, a COVID vaccine to individuals who are 12 years old and over. And in this case, it's very important because that uh, eligible population now includes uh, uh, children 12 years and over, which, is, which who are also, as you know, a part of the, the school community. So uh, mostly a student between uh, middle school and high school. Uh, also, those services will be offered between uh, non-traditional hours, so, so uh, they will be uh, offered uh, beyond the typical 4 or 5 p.m. that we used to do at other places. I, I also want to share with you that uh, last week in Clark County, we administered the one million dose for a, a resident here in Clark County. So, uh, right now, we can say that at least one, uh, more than one million uh, individuals in Clark County have received at least uh, one dose of the COVID uh, vaccine. The, the grand total of vaccines administered by the, the health district, uh, our partners, the pharmacies here in Clark County is already over 1.7 million uh, doses. I, I also want to say that, uh, as we know, the CDC in recent days uh, updated the guidelines, and now individuals who are uh, fully vaccinated uh, can take advantage of that and you know, kind of uh, return to normal life, or at least the new normal, if you wish. And that's the reason why uh, right now I am not wearing a, a mask with you because I, I, I'm fully vaccinated with uh, two doses and, uh, and this is one of the, the CDC recommendations. So uh, I just wanted again to make sure everybody is aware of that. Uh, I just want to say that uh, uh, right now in Clark County, uh, more than 57% uh, uh, of the population have received at least one dose of vaccine. But uh, even so, our numbers, in terms of uh, new cases reported uh, every day, uh, have decreased uh, dramatically since uh, December. We still are uh, in pandemic. So as you know, today, uh, June 1st is actually the, the first day that uh, the, the mass social distancing uh, recommendations uh, are lifted 
in, in Clark County and Nevada. But still, especially for those who are not uh, vaccinated, it's very important to, to consider that and take advantage of the multiple vaccination sites that are here uh, across the county. And this school actually would be one of those places. Uh, I will stop here. I will invite uh, Trustee Cepeda, please come over. Thank you. I'll be brief. Um, I think I speak for myself as well as the superintendent. We are incredibly thankful for this partnership. We know that our schools are beacons in our community and they're places where we know students know they'll find an adult that cares about them and we're really excited to bring vaccines, um, the opportunity to get vaccinated at one of our sites here. So we're very thankful for the opportunity. Um, I will also take a minute to plug that my 15 year old got his first vaccine and he, you know, he's pretty excited to get back to normal life. So I think uh, let's do good for our neighbors, by our neighbors, and let's all get vaccinated it's really important to be able to get back to um, some normalcy. But thank you, very thankful. And with that, I'll introduce the superintendent, uh, Dr. Jesus Jarra. Thank you, Trustee Cepeda. And um, as Do uh, Dr. Lagan mentioned, we have been strong partners with the Southern Nevada Health District from the beginning of this pandemic that we've been dealing with. And as Trustee Cepeda mentioned, um, our public traditional schools are part of the community, are the beacons of our community. From feeding our children, our families, over 14 million meals. Since this pandemic started 15 months ago, in coordination and collaboration with our great partners in the Southern Nevada Health District and the county, we were able to get to a point that we were able to bring our children back to school face to face in March. We were able to end school, Last week had a great ending. We are finishing and going through our graduation ceremonies this last week and to now. And now, as of today, we started our summer acceleration program where our children are in school, hopefully to get back to a quick um, summer and open schools next year and have a successful year, get back to the business. Um, as I mentioned to Dr. Lagan, as he walked in, you know, um, as a great partnership we've had where we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, and I think, again, as our school systems are part of this community, opening our doors to our families for vaccines. I'm not wearing a mask either because I have been vaccinated uh, on my two doses as well. So this is a welcome um, for us and for our children and our families, a welcome partnership. Again, thank you. I do have to run because I got to get to a graduation um, this evening. Pero uh, muchas gracias por estar aquí. Eh, este, esta escuela eh, de Desert Pines y, y en una eh, partnership con el Southern Nevada Health District para darle las, vaccinas, uh, las vacunas a las familias, a los niños de 12 a 15 años y también a los adultos de, de high school también para nosotros. Así que muy importante eh, que estar aquí con ustedes y con la comunidad. Thank you very much. That's a, that, that's, a, I mean, that's a tough question to uh, forecasting is very difficult. Uh, we really cannot anticipate that. What I can tell you is that uh, because uh, the CDC and the FDA, when they approved the Pfizer vaccine for 12 years all and over, they also review their recommendation for Pfizer vaccine and now they allowed or recommend that the vaccine can, can be offered simultaneously with other vaccines, it makes it easier for our immunization system or the pediatricians or family practitioners to offer the, this vaccine to children in conjunction with the vaccines that are required by the, by the school system. So uh, it's, it's a great, great advantage because now uh, children who whose parents decide to vaccinate them, 
don't have to wait uh, 14 days between the a COVID vaccine and a, a different vaccine to be administered. So, but again, uh, I, I cannot uh, forecast what would be the number since this is something so new for everybody. Thank you. So the question is about the fathers who are hesitant to bring the children for vaccination and, yeah. Well, the vaccine has already been demonstrated to be safe in children as well as adults. Uh, actually, as, uh, as you know, the, the vaccine was approved for children just uh, a few weeks ago, and it was done only after a studies weren't completed in, in children in the United States. Uh, those studies, the, the main uh, element for, for those was to uh, be able to identify any uh, adverse events, severity of the vaccine in children. The, the studies actually show that the vaccine, yes, is uh, highly effective in children as well as in adults and also that uh, the, the frequency, the risk of uh, adverse or severe adverse events in children is, is minimal. And really, uh, when you look at the, the risk of contracting uh, coronavirus and, and the risk of adverse events is, is extremely uh, limited uh, in children. So that's why the FDA approved the, the vaccine. Okay, so the question is whether the vaccine would be mandatory for children. Well, I, I cannot anticipate that. I, uh, if that happened, would be a decision of uh, starting at the federal level. Uh, what I can tell you right now is that the vaccine is not mandatory. The vaccine is, is being offered to children, and, and we actually require the, the approval or, or consent of the parents for the children to be vaccinated. But uh, uh, as far as uh, I know, uh, here in Nevada and Clark County at this point, there is not any discussion regarding a mandatory vaccine for children. Okay. So uh, the question is, uh, if, if are we satisfied with the number for children being vaccinated so far? Well, I, I, I would say that we just started offering the vaccine t uh, to children perhaps two weeks ago. And uh, we, we are looking at, at the summer and now when uh, parents start preparing uh, the children to go back to school, that's when typically uh, children are brought into the immunization program for the child. So we are uh, looking at taking advantage of, of that, uh, uh, I would say, tradition, if you wish, uh, in order to, to enhance uh, our access to children and being uh, able to offer the vaccine. But again, we are just starting uh, offering the vaccine uh, to children, so uh, we we have to look at uh, the you know the next uh, few weeks to see uh, what is the progression of the campaign in children so far. I think I can speak as a parent that, you know, we know the science behind the vaccines. It is critical that we make sure our students are protected, our kids are protected. Um, I mean, I, they're just thinking to history, all the different vaccines we've had in the past, uh, you know, polio. I, the first thing that comes to mind is polio. But, you know, there are measures that are backed by science that are important for our students to take uh, so that we can make sure that they're safe and healthy so we can get back to our normal living. Um, my teen is... He has a second dose tomorrow, the third. So whatever the third is, because days just fly by. But you know, 
he's excited. His peers are excited to also be having the vaccine. So he has plenty of friends who have taken that first shot. And again, I think everyone's just kind of really looking forward to being normal, walking around without a mask, uh, not having to have, be physically distant. Obviously, we still want our students to be socially connected, but you know, just physically distant. So I, I guess I could speak as a parent in that, in that regard where he's excited, we're excited, and that we want to be good citizens. We want to be good citizens and be, be good neighbors to our partners, to our family, our friends, our neighbors, our community. So, and to do that, we need, you know, we need to be mindful about others as well as, as, well as ourselves. So. For next school year, for this, I'm, well, we, I'm not too sure yet. Um, I'll definitely defer to the superintendent. Um, I know him and his team are talking about it, making sure that we make the decision that, again, aligns the most with science um, and the guidelines placed forth by the state and the federal government. So stay tuned. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I will look. To, I will look to our communications team because they're phenomenal. They're uh, putting it out, putting it out on social media. I'm sure there's uh, a parent link. Uh, And, and word of mouth, we, we know that there is, um, there's power in organic movements, right? So we definitely want folks to hopefully be able to, you know, share it on their, on their socials and, and be able to be part of, you know, part of the movement to get everyone, at, everyone vaccinated, so. What was the question one more time? You know, I graduated high school in 2007. In 2007, our budget was like $4 billion. It is currently like two, two point something billion. Um, so that's a bit of a, to me, it's, it's dramatic. It's you know over 13, 13 years ago, and and we we see those fruits now. We, every cons every year, we consistently cut, and so honestly, I, I am just very thankful, very thankful that our state leaders are able to you know bring additional revenue revenue to our schools because it's critical. It's how we get more people. Because again, we're a people organization. Seventy plus percent of our budget goes to people, um, so it, it's. It's essential, like, please more. Yeah, that's all I will say. Thank you and just please more. <laughs>